Well, greetings, everybody, and welcome once again to the latest edition of the In World Review, the show where we bring you news headlines and discussion in general about the metaverse, the world of online immersive spaces that are currently going to be the future of your real world, quite possibly. We are making the transition online from pages to spaces. Yes, that is what I believe. It may be a long slog, but we're there already, and we've been here for quite a while. Well, um, May Day has now been and gone, although I must admit here in the UK, the holiday weekend that comes with it continues. Um, everybody gets a holiday on Monday called the May Day holiday. But today is the 2nd of May. And um, it is the 2nd of May of uh, 2015, in fact, lest I neglect to get that right, as usual. And um, it's the first Friday, uh, sorry, first Saturday of the month. And that means we are here at our studios in Chilbo, in the grand old platform, the high street of the metaverse, some say, Second Life. Yes, indeed, we are. And uh, that means we'll be bringing you um, ooh, a whole load of things like show and tell, destinations, arts, and all sorts of stuff that uh, we haven't actually covered for a little bit of a while. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce everybody who's here. Um, next to me uh, on my left, of course, uh, is Tara Yates. Uh, welcome, Tara. And um, she's probably getting settled because she is doing camera as well for us at the moment. So I'm sure she's saying welcome. And on my right, of course, it's Maria Koloff from Metaworld Business. Uh, hi, Maria. Hi, Mal. Great to be here. And I will repeat what I said when I was muted, and that is glad to be here. Oh, very good. So it wasn't uh, right. It was just a news. Fair enough. Of course. <laughs> I, had my, I had my mic muted so I can curse in freedom. Ah, yes. Oh, yes. That's a good idea. Oh, but then, of course, I would go silent, wouldn't I? Mm, can't have that. And also joining us, and also joining us on the stage in that wonderful tree-shaped chair over next to Tara, um, old friend of the channel, been with us very often indeed, it's Anna McMillan. Welcome, Anna. Thank you, Mal. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's good to be here. Now, um, we also had been uh, planned um, to um, um, Varda, um, oh, Springs, oh, I forget, her avatar name, Chichilia Rockstead, basically, uh, from Virtual Voice, was um, uh, meant to be here with us too. But for some reason, we haven't been able to get hold of her. So um, hopefully we'll have her back um, another week. Um, I think she can actually um, come over to our Hypergrid studio. So uh, that's, that's no real problem. Um, she actually did um, point out to me um, ooh, a couple of weeks ago now that there were some problems with um, a platform called IMVU, um, something about changes of policy with financial rates to the disadvantage of users. And also, I, I, I'm, I gather she is going what she calls undercover in Second Life, um, particularly, uh, to, dis um, to investigate um, something very close to uh, what we are discussing um, uh, last week about piracy and creators' um, uh, rights and stuff. And um, she's taking the Green Lanterns with her on this undercover operation. The Green Lanterns, for those of you who know Second Life, are uh, they're, they're named after the comic strip, of course, but they, they're a kind of um, you know, friendly kind of police force sort of operation in Second Life. They, they don't wander around enforcing things that Lindens do. They just sort of keep an eye on things and they're there for um, to help people if requested. And um, apparently they're going to be helping our father do her um, undercover investigation. And um, I guess we'll hear more about that later when it's done as opposed to now. Anyway, anyway, on with the actual show, as it were. And I'm quickly going to run down my uh, Twitter feeds. You can find my Twitter feed for Metaverse News Links at uh, twitter.com slash malburns, or one word. <clears throat> And um, anything to do with interfacing, um, future of interfacing, virtual reality, um, may, you know, uh, um, 
interfacing tools as opposed to every single post that comes up these days and um, the metaverse in general you'll find there and you'll find links to all the things I'm about to mention there too. Most of my links as always, um, well the, not all of them but a lot of them they head up to um, Hypergrid Business. Um, and of course, Maria will update us on on those. Um, also, an awful lot of links, um, as indeed we had last week, to uh, hyperica.com um, with um, basically a destinations um, guide um, for OpenSim. And um, it's, <laughs> it's formidable, you know, with uh, sort of 12 or 13 new locations coming up every, every day, quite literally. You realize just how many there are. Okay. Um, I have uh, one post here, which um, is it's at WordPress.com, but it's a very, very long um, name. Uh, so I suggest you go to Twitter for this. MD4 blog post on the disruptive power of Second Life. This was one of those independent articles that suddenly pops up every now and again. It's not a Second Life blog or even a Metaverse blog. It's just somebody who actually wrote a blog uh, looking at the disruptive power of um, uh, being able to use Second Life for um, education and things like that. More Hyperica, more Hyperica, more Hyperica. Oh, and a YouTube, then a Hyperica, Hyperica. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, I do love this. Live scrolling <laughs> to the same link address. Okay, Inara Pay. Um, she had a post uh, during the week um, called Bright Canopy. Because on the first user group meeting notes have been published. Now, Bright Canopy is... Um, Generally speaking, the name of um, something um, various people are trying to pull together to replace the um, now uh, defunct SL Go that was, um, or Firestorm Go as it actually was most of the time, um, uh, run by OnLive, which of course Sony bought up. In fact, um, even even old members of that service actually um, Thursday was the last day, so there is now not even a trace of online left on the web. Uh, but the the idea is that um, you get a video stream of a, a virtual world, um, not like this program, which is television model, but you actually see a stream of the environment and you have an interactive uplink that um, sends signals to, to the client and you can literally operate the video. This is actually because the, the video you're watching is a single instance um, of the viewer. Uh, which is simply being run on the server and then downloaded to use video. So it's not broadcast, it's actually narrowcast one-to-one. And a lot of people are missing it already because it did allow people to access Second Life and Open Sims and the Hypergrid on, um, shall we say, not quite state-of-the-art computers. Um, and, of course, it worked on things like iPads and Androids. So um, it, it was a, a lovely way of getting into virtual environments um, other than a workstation and a good graphics workstation at that. <clears throat> so uh, Bright Canopy is, is an effort by, I think, mostly Second Life residents to sort of uh, reinvent the game. I'm not sure whether they're using Amazon Web Servers or one of the, um, the others. Um, but um, if you check out in our page blog, it's at Modem world wordpress.com so that's m-o-d-e-m-w-o-r-l-d dot wordpress.com and um, she, she's got a link to the notes there um, right um, pings from the afterlife dot blogspot dot com that's uh, ping, um, pings p-i-n-g-s from the afterlife spelt all as one word at blogspot.com uh, this is the members um, um, blog and um, it's a weekly roundup of uh, the adventures the every Wednesday of the uh, Hypergrid Safari and uh, we had great fun this week as we do most weeks and um, as far as I remember, he racks his brains, none of the hyper jumps collapsed. In other words, we didn't over um, we didn't overload any sims, which does occasionally happen when we find ourselves jumping to somebody's uh, sim that's um, the region that's being run on somebody's home computer. And they're, oh, what do you mean there's 50 of you? <laughs> kind of thing. Um, so, um, yeah, good review there. It's an hour's blog. Uh, more have a good business. Um, oh, boy, oh, boy, I've got a loss of you, Maria. Right, um, an article at roadtovr.com. Uh, road... Um, 2VR, T-O-V-R, all one word. Um, new HoloLens video shows glimpses of detailed internals and early prototypes. 
Um, I, I'm a great follower of Road to VR, but they um, they have far more posts than I actually retweet. I really, um, you know, the, 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 ne- the next piece of hardware that comes three times a day is really of no interest to me unless it's a complete solution or something really original. Uh, but um, this HoloLens uh, video did um, have a, a desired impact, as it were. So you might want to read that. Um uh, published um, two hours ago, no less, in uh, in uh, my Annex blog. Uh, that's Melbourne's Annex, or one word, dot blogspot, dot com. Um, a video about teaching in Second Life um, I put up there earlier. And have a good business. I wrote to VR again, um, right, uh, one hour ago. Um, a new post just come up. A case study um, about something called, um, well, um, it's the creator of something called InSpirit, I-N-S-P-I-R-I-T. And the InSpirit creator breaks down responsive web VR design. And this was quite curious. It was really about bringing virtuality onto web pages and um, not um, not just limited to, you know, a, a gimmicky thing that works with, I don't know, um, Oculus or something else. Um, the, the, the idea is it's um, deployable um, um, uh, across multiple hardware and things like that, but via the web. Uh, so you might find that interesting. And um, lo and behold, I know there's a lot in Google+, Plus, but that seems to be it for my main Twitter feed. Um, I also have some Second Life links if we don't get to them later at another Twitter feed. Um, since we're in Second Life, I'll promote it. It's uh, twitter.com slash malburns underscore writer, which is my Second Life avatar name. And we have various arts, destinations, events, and um, videos as well. Lots and lots of machinima every day um, available on that feed. But it's uh, more specific to Second Life than anywhere else. So that said, um, I'm going to hand over to uh, the mic to Tara who um, of course is usually on top of the news with Second Life and um, it, it's now really her once a month chance to do the famous show and tell so over to you Tara <laughs> Well thank you Mal and, uh, and, and greetings everyone from the Pacific Northwest where you know it is the second of May here too uh, and one more button to punch <laughs> and uh, you know it's, it's an interesting process trying to run a camera and talk at the same time you know, something like talking and chewing gum at the same time. You know, it's uh, a <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> you think I'd have it, yeah, have it down by now, but I don't. But uh, yeah, you know, Second Life. There's there's so much amazing stuff being done these days with uh, people who are who are creating in mesh in particular. Um, not certainly that's not the only thing that's that's wonderful going on, but uh, you know, the 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 uptake on mesh and. The expansion of mesh into lots of new categories, I think, is, you know, is, is really, uh, really uh, eye popping, and uh, and so this week I have several items to share in that category, um, and I'm going to start. Where where am I going to start? Well, I think we'll start with these guys. <clears throat> we have some entirely cute little birds. Now now that little birds have been around Second Life for quite some time, but these guys have the additional feature of they're moving around. Um, and they move differently depending upon, you know, there's several in the, in the set and they come in different colors. Um, I just bought one color because I didn't want to buy the, I didn't want to feel like buy, uh, splurging for the, uh, for the uh, <clears throat> mega pack of all colors because the price was too high. Uh, but these are a half deer uh, creation. I know you have seen half deer deer around and some other wonderful creatures that have been created by half deer. Um, and, uh, and these little guys are at, um, there's a, uh, this isn't a big, a big show, but there's, but there's a, a thing called, uh, there's a home show. Um, and I, it was one of those, I happened into the store um, on, uh, I guess it was 50 linen Fridays. There's, there's a, a short list of uh, stores that participate with one item at 50 lindens. And it's a, a, a pretty select list of, of designers whose whose stuff is is you know good quality work, and it's a short enough list that I can kind of do a quick round of them in of a Friday evening in about oh half an hour, and then there's time for for uh, <laughs> for side trips that I you know you I stumble on something cool and I go to find it or uh, in the case of these birds um, the there were a couple of them loose in the store and uh, but they weren't for sale in the store, but I spotted a sign uh, saying home show and I suspected that's where they were. And sure enough. So I went there 
and I found the birds. Uh, and you'll, you'll also see the little tree that's, that one of them is perched on, uh, which is an orange tree and is part of a threesome of trees that are fruit trees, along with the same designer had some other items at the same home show. Uh, these are, smi notice this, this is a smiley face pot, which is kind of cute, but, I, but the trees are nice. Um, so I, I couldn't resist either one, having a soft spot for trees in the scheme of things. Now, the other thing I picked up is this, you will see here, uh, for those who aren't quite ready for, for ready for spring yet, we have in the background um, a really, really nice wood stove. Um, and this is from Lisp, L-I-S-P, um, Pandora Pop Star. And this particular, the stove at the moment is at this current round, this month's Collaborate. Collaborate is C-O-L-L-A-B-O-R-8-8 numbers on the end. Um, and this is one of the longest running uh, changes every month um, collective uh, of designers who each put one item in and the price has to have 88 in it in it <laughs> um, and what got me going on this one was I didn't actually go to, to check out this month's collaborate which uh, has just changed over because it's the first of the month um, but the uh, basket of or the the box of wood and the fire set um, you, know, you know each of these items is like one prim you know one has has land impact of one prim I think the stove has land impact of three prims. Um, you know, it, it's just it's just stunning what can be done with almost nothing in the way of, of prim impact these days. But the detail on these is just you know really uh, amazing. Uh, anyway, so so the 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 fire the firewood box and the uh, stove set the brooms and and shovel and all that were part of 50 linen Friday. So uh, those, but those should be in the Lisp store, uh, which is the Lisp Bazaar um, after, since it's now Saturday. So there are those. Now the other thing that's uh, come up this week and let's see, did I set, I didn't set a camera for this. So I guess I'll just pan around. Um, one of the longest standing designers for plants in Second Life is Heart Garden Center. And the folks at Heart have gotten into mesh and these wonderful hanging baskets um, are one of the things that they've come out with here this spring. Um, and they come in a variety of colors and uh, they're just, you know, really beautifully done. And in addition to these hanging baskets, they've got uh, some similarly flowered um, window boxes that if you've got a building with, you know, with windows on it, hey, you can put them outside and they really look cool. <laughs> just, so uh, if you haven't paid a visit to our garden lately, um, do check them out. They've been doing quite a bit of uh, up, <laughs> updating with, with their materials in mesh. So <clears throat> that's the show and tell this week. I think that was all I had. So let me get myself back over here. Meanwhile, so, a certain somebody here has actually crashed and I've had to reboot the computer. So uh, you won't see me on camera just in case you're swinging oh, that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> did, uh, did, um, did we cover the cows? Oh, the cows. I talked about the cows last time. Oh, okay. There's just still yes, there. Fair yes, enough. The, yes. <laughs> okay. The cows are still here. The cows now have some fresh grass to eat. But uh, okay. Well, I just the... remember before I crashed that I saw some cows <laughs> lurking around, and I thought they might be on display for a reason. Yeah. Well, no. I just they just they wanted to stay. They 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 asked me to, to stay this time. They just didn't want to quite go back with their box, <laughs> so, right. so they didn't. Very good. Anyway. Okay. Well, <coughs> on to other items here. <clears throat> um. Just uh, an, a reminder for those of you who might or might not get their, their not notices. Um, there's an organization called the Immersive Education Initiative, um, which is not a nonprofit international collaboration of various institutes established in 2005. So it's been around for quite some time uh, to define and develop standards, best practices, technology platforms, yada, 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 for virtual worlds, virtual reality, augmented mixed reality, simulations, game-based learning, and training systems. Uh, as well as fully immersive environments. Um, and they are currently have a call open for speakers, exhibits, and research uh, due May 15th for their Immersion 2015 uh, conference. And that conference is in Paris at the Sorbonne, September 7th through September 10th. So if you want to advance mark your calendar and you think you might be in Europe in that period of time or you're in Europe, um, it sounds like that, and this is like their, 
tenth year, ninth year of that particular conference. Uh, so it's one that uh, may well be worth uh, checking out. But anyway, if you if you are uh, kind of in the research and speakers end of things, you still have time to get in uh, proposals for that. Um, it's immersiveeducation.org and poke around and you'll, I'm sure you'll find the uh, Immersion 2015 information. Um, and the, in the world of new things that have started, uh, Keanu Ryder, who we all know and love from Mad P, um, has a, a new uh, major hunt going on called Unia. Um, and uh, that's started this week and has apparently, I haven't had a chance to check it out yet, uh, but has grown tremendously. Apparently, the scope and magnitude of this particular thing with the introduction of experience tools. So, uh, this may be a good opportunity to see uh, just what can be done with experience tools. <laughs> Uh, worth checking out. Um, the Second Life blog also mentioned this week that uh, uh, steering people to the fact that there is a Second Life affiliate program uh, where if you have uh, a website, uh, you can become, you can get into an affiliate program where anyone who uh, clicks through from an ad you have for Second Life um, and then downloads the browser and logs in, uh, it's good for 75 cents. It's not a lot, but it's not limited to, to those who uh, <laughs> get uh, premium memberships. So that's, you know, that's, you know it's, it's changed, but hey, if you get a lot of traffic and you get a lot of traffic from uh, people who are, uh, <clears throat> are not already in Second Life, um, it's, uh, it's something to check out. Um, it's part of, they've gone, gone in with commission, what used to be called Commission Junction, um, which is probably the longest standing and certainly the largest of the, uh, of the affiliate program coordination hubs. Um, so they've, you know, they've got a long, a long history and uh, a long track record. So it's a legit uh, longstanding organization. So uh, take a look at that if you want to add a few bucks to your website. Uh, let's see, kitty cats. You know, kitty cats, uh, everybody knows from the show that uh, kitty cats, speaking of, I have a live cat who's just showed, showed up on my lap. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> heard me talking and had, had to get in on the action. Uh, anyway, I'm a longtime kitty cats fan and, uh, and have entirely too many of them. <laughs> and uh, the kitty cats have come out with a, a new upgrade to, to the kitty cats software and now kitty cats have more ways they more positions they sleep in they have more toys and they sleep with toys in various ways and different toys there's a, like a dozen toys that they they come out with now um they apparently i haven't seen it yet but apparently they now play with each other this i have to see and there are a number of ways that you can now play with your kitty cats differently than in, in, ex, in expansion of what you could do before. So uh, this, needless to say, has kitty cat fans uh, very excited. And um, so it's hours of fun watching your kitty cats do new things that you haven't seen them do before. And let's see, onward. Um, a blog post that I th looks like it's one that's uh, well worth reading. Um, and uh, I'll give Hamlet all credit for this um, blog post titled Don't Let VR Go Wrong Again uh, by Jackie <clears throat> Mori, uh, who's a VR part pioneer and who is seeing the same mistakes being made by Oculus Rift and other leaders of the VR industry that caused the technology to, to uh, <laughs> face plant <laughs> in the early 90s. Um, and, uh, and she points out a number of issues that she sees as part of the problem. Um, one being, of course, the, uh, the uh, atrocious amount of um, media hype being done. Uh, she, she notes also another part of the problem is the generation gap. And specifically, she notes that many of today's VR industry leaders were barely around for VR's first wave. Uh, example, mm -hmm. Oculus Rift's founder, Palmer Lucky, was born in 1992. <laughs> you can do the math. Pers perspective, uh -huh, yeah. perspective, yes. <laughs> perspective, uh huh, yeah, perspective. Uh, uh, and then she also makes another interesting point, and she says that, uh, that another problem is that the tech press is focused too much on covering venture funding of VR as opposed to venture innovators, as VR innovators. And point taken. You know, what, what do you do? You chase, do you just chase the money or do you go find the people who are really doing interesting things? Um, 
So she, uh, that's going to be, I think, a blog well worth reading, and I'll steer you to uh, um, New World Notes for the uh, for Hamlet's write up on this, and a link to the actual uh, to the actual blog post, which I think is a must read. Um, and my last item. Hey, would you like an avatar that's actually you? <laughs> uh, yes, based yes, on yes. Me? <laughs> yes, there's a kick, there's a Kickstarter. There's a Kickstarter to avatar, av avatarize yourself for both 3D worlds and printing. Um, and this this little item came from our old friend um, uh, Dizzy Banjo. Um, uh, and and the, the the downside of this is so you can you can pledge various amounts of money um, to have yourself captured in uh, 3D motion capture um, and an avatar created and they're doing two different levels of avatars um, one they one they call a basic capture and one and a um, yeah a, <laughs> there's a, there's a, a term than basic capture no 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 an advanced you know <laughs> a, a more and more a more sophisticated uh, capture. Um, there's, there's a anyway. Uh, the term is getting away from me. Anyway, um, the, the 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 gotcha on this is they're do, they're they're setting up a tour through through the U.S. And so, in order for to, for the motion capture, you have to be able to show up in one of the cities that's on the on the agenda, which includes Chicago, Columbus, Ohio, Toronto, Ontario. Uh, Pittsburgh, New York, Boston, Atlanta, Raleigh, North Carolina, Orlando, Austin, Seattle, Portland, Se San Francisco, and L.A., and this is starting about mid-October. Um, they have a ways to go on their funding. They've got a, they've got a, a, a goal of 100000 and so far they've got 10000 This was as of a few hours ago, um, and they've got 24 days to go to, to uh, get up to 100000 um, there are some lesser ways, including an option for an early, AP, early access to the API for developers kit. No capture required. <laughs> hmm. um, anyway, you can check that out. Um, and again, there's a link uh, from uh, Hamlet's blog for this uh, to the Kickstarter. Uh, but uh, you can the, apparently these are also being you can get get one of get yourself scanned, and then it can be turned into a statue. <laughs> I think well, uh, I'll have and, to get uh, I have to get dizzy back on this show sometime. He used to be with us yeah. um, an awful lot actually, so it'd be a good excuse to drag him in one day a week. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, yeah. so if, if if you really like what your RL self looks like and you want to capture it forever, there's your chance. <laughs> and that's it for me. Well, thank you, Tara. Um, please don't try switching back to me. I don't think I'm quite in yet. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand over the mic to uh, Maria for the latest from Hypergrid Business. Over to you, Maria. Well, thank you very much, Mal. I'm going to start with my competitor, the Current Journal. Oh, um, uh, Kevin, yeah, he's my next door neighbor in, <laughs> in Canada. I don't know whether he's quite a competitor, actually, <laughs> but never mind. <laughs> well, <laughs> and the reason I'm looking over at his page, because he's got the Fashion Expo write-up, which starts today on Tangle Grid. Ah, I haven't got So I wanted yet. to remind everybody that it's happening and to hop on over to reward them for having an expo and being on the hypergrid this is this was a big thing for them they're a commercial grid that switched over so please be nice and um and uh and they're the only ones holding expos too so please do support that i'm heading over after this event now um you had uh leslie from uh tangle grid on a couple of weeks back right mm -hmm. yep and she dared me to make some clothing because I was complaining about the length, lack of mid-length skirts in open sim that forced me to wear uh, pants on this show. And, you know, I hate wearing pants. I prefer wearing skirts for, for business. And there, there were only mini skirts or really long fancy ball gowns. And I, I don't want to wear a fancy ball gown. That just seems so, I don't know, PBS or something. And um, and I don't want to wear a mini skirt because you know the camera is looking right right at me. <laughs> so um, 
uh, I started to find to try to find out what I can do. What can you do with prims? What can you do with the flexi prims? And there's really not much you can do. You have to have a mesh skirt. So I was playing around with Blender. Uh, I talked about that a little bit last week. Blender is really hard. Um, and I was ready to give up on working with mesh and just hire somebody to make a mesh skirt for me. I posted a, um, a note about it on OpenSim Virtual, which is the one of the, the biggest community on Google Plus for OpenSim. And somebody pointed me to a guy named Daniel uh, Damian Fate. Oh yeah. Open source some mesh templates, and um, I don't know if I've ever heard Ooh, this good. before. <laughs> I've certainly <laughs> forgot all about it if I ever knew it. Well, Nara Malone of Nara's Nook has uploaded all those templates to Nara's Nook Grid. So if you don't know how to upload mesh, you don't have to worry about it. Just teleport over. And I posted the instructions for what to do um, on Hypergrid Business. The story is titled um, something. <laughs> Two shortcuts to a career in virtual fashion. All right. So all the Hypergrid links are there and the link to, to, to the site. And so you, you, you get this, uh, the female mesh templates or the male mesh templates. You bring them home to your grid. You unpack them. You, you you make a you know you rename make a copy and rename the one you want you put it on you edit it because you can edit mesh um, and you slap a texture on it and you can edit the x the horizontal and vertical um, uh, proportion of the texture to to get the the right size of the texture on your mesh object and you have a unique skirt or dress or pants or jacket. It is so cool. It takes seconds to do, and you have something that's not currently available on the Kitely Market. So now I'm going to have to go figure out how to upload it to Kitely Market and take it to the fashion fair because I promised them. So uh, that was um, that was very exciting for me. Um, and uh, I don't know if there's other people out there also struggling with mesh clothing. Well, you can you can. You know, you can start out like 99% of the way there by using their templates. Or if you are looking at Blender, you can upload one of those things to Blender and see if you can tweak it to, you know, to adjust it a little bit to what you're looking for. So that's, I'm thinking of doing that next to see if I can do that. Um, but I, I don't have, I don't have a lot of optimism about being able to. <laughs> Oh, I, I, question, I have been playing question. all week with prims yes. and sculptures, but for, for, just getting shapes for terraforming, actually. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, mesh, mesh clothing, definitely. <laughs> Starting from 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 somebody who's also done already done the heavy lifting, so that it's they're they're rigged and what to work with yeah, with uh, rig. with yeah. avatars. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, Dam Damien uh, is is a significant designer in Second Life. Mm -hmm. um, my question is. Um, the, in addition to the mesh files, the, uh, are the um, are there also uh, texture maps? Yes, he's got alphas. He's got uh, the text. He's got some uh, some other stuff there, which I don't even know what it was. Come on, come back here. Um, <laughs> yeah, the reason I ask about texture maps is that that uh, typically when you when Make you get a DAE DAE yes. file, you get you get. Um, a, t a texture map enables you to take uh, the shading, a, a, a doc, you know, a, a basically a file that has the shading for the right shading for the document, and you can then add your own texture to it. But then it's not just flat texture; it's got shading where it should for folds oh, and see. wrinkles and well, all that kind of stuff. If you're thing, is that the same thing as a bake map? A bake map, maybe, yeah. Yeah, that, because yeah. Uh, that's what he's got. So you can get all those on Nara's Nook, the male and female Excellent. mesh models, alpha layers, and bake maps. Um, and they're already uploaded. So which which is good for me because you know uploading mesh can can also be tricky. Uh -huh. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so that was that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I recommend that people go take a look at it. Um, and uh, start populating the markets with some business-appropriate clothing. Oh, uh, Maria, I just have one other 
question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you have it, are your is your new line of skirts featuring your uh, your rug textures as promised? <laughs> no, what I did was I, 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 there was a painting I liked in one of those old fashioned, long out of copyright paintings. And I grabbed a bunch of flower textures from it. And I used that to make one outfit that's, that's in the, in the article. And then, um, I used, uh, Pixar just released uh, 128 different textures. And I used their gray lace texture to make another one. And uh, they both look really pretty. And um, they are, uh, you can see th the results in the article. Great. So uh, then the other thing that I found, and this is while updating the Hyperica directory, uh, there's a sandbox on Great Canadian Grid. And um, uh, I, I mean, I, I knew that this was out there, but I was, had no idea how much clothing templates was in there. Linda Kelly has a building uh, ore, building supply ore, which I thought was just generic pieces of, you know, windows and stuff. Um, uh, in the sandbox region on the Great Canadian Grid has that ore in it. And that ore, one of the things that it's in it is a whole store full of clothing templates. The flexi skirts of like million different shapes and sizes, the sculptees, the collars, all the stuff that's pre-mesh, pre but is still useful and could still make some ni really nice outfits. Plus the system clothing templates, it's all there ready for you to take. And um, the license terms for the Linda Kelly stuff is, of course, CC0, so any use anywhere whatsoever. The license terms for the Damien uh, Fate uh, templates are you cannot resell the templates themselves. You can give them away, but you can't resell them. You have to keep his attributions if you give away the templates. But you can make stuff with them and sell the stuff that you make. So um, those are both re very good license terms. And um, so um, uh, I wanted to let people know that it's out there. And again, the fashion expo starts today. So um, make some fashions and go out there and, and look at some other fashions. <clears throat> While we're talking of the great Canadian grid, <laughs> I am still waiting for a uh, happy end. I'm glad you got uh, Chigion's um, location up and everything. I um, We now have four regions in Great Canadian Grid. There's Meta World Broadcasting and Melbourne's Estate, both of which need listing, but there is also now Melbourne's Outland and Meta World Spaces. So we've got four whole regions now. And I wonder, I mean, Okay, so just uh, email me and let me know which ones are open to the public. They all are. Where the, where the public can come and do stuff. Yeah, they all are. That's the idea. Okay, so email <laughs> me and let me know. Okay. Uh, because I <coughs> Look, did not... I'll let you get on. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, carry on. <laughs> carry on and with if, your other news. If anybody <laughs> else wants, me to, wants to add a region <clears throat> to Hyperica, go to hyperica.com in the top very top of the page there's an add new destination uh go to that click it make sure you have your hypergrid address not just the region name but the whole hypergrid address try teleport in from a different grid to double check it and we need a snapshot of your region it really shows off what's in there and a little description of why people should come and visit so we have been cleaning up tyler and i have been cleaning up the directory uh, we, we still have a couple of hundred destinations to add. We're, st we're still very much backlogged, but we're trying to get them up there. We're clearing out the old ones that have moved or died. Uh, we have the destination guide up that some grids are already using. Um, so that's exciting. Um, and uh, we're always looking for more places for people to go. So uh, definitely, if you could add them on, uh, if, you, uh, if you can upload the images, it'll save us a bit of work and help get your region up faster. Okay, um, let's see. Kitely residents can now change mega region sizes. 
Uh, anybody who's the Kitely customer knows that they have these advanced mega regions where you can have, you know, one or two by two or three by three or a four by four mega region with no border crossings. Well, now uh, if you have uh, that's if you have like a two by two and you want to expand it to a four by four, you can now do that with a, with a just a single click through their web interface. Um, so they're making that easier. Um, Okay, so um, um, uh, one thing that's uh, <clears throat> uh, happened this month is the Metabolt viewer, which was worked on by Casper Tech. There was a little bit of dispute over the, the name. Casper Tech stopped supporting it. They switched. They're going to be making something based on a Radagast viewer. And um, uh, uh, Ferd, uh, Federus, Federson emailed me. Uh, Fred Beckerson, he runs the uh, Outworld grid and content site in the LSL script library. By the way, the Outworld site has so much great content. They have sharks in there that will follow you around and attack you. Oh, for free, uh, all, all open source. But anyway, so he was looking for... Um, uh, some documentation for Lib Open Metaverse, which is which is something used to make bots, and uh, the wiki went down. It was like a one-man website, and the one man went off to do something else, or mm -hmm. one woman, and the site disappeared. And so he started worrying about all this content that could disappear, um, or has already disappeared. I mean, of course, we've heard of Open Sim Creations earlier a few months ago this winter. Um, it had backup problems and went down and never came back up again. Uh, we all know about grids that are run by one guy that go <clears throat> down on a regular basis. Uh, and it's one thing if it's just your personal grid with like your house on it or your stuff. But it's something different when it's a lot of other people's content. So Open Sim Creations had a lot of content on it donated by a lot of people. The Avi World's grid had builds on it, created by different people. When something like that goes down, it's it's not it doesn't just affect you; it affects a lot of people. And um, or something like a wiki, like a community site, uh, the, these things you know ha have a widespread effect. Um, another thing that went down: uh, New World Studio. Uh, I haven't heard back from Olivier Battini for over a year now. Um, he promised to keep it updated. Half of it's open source, but I don't know where the open source is. Uh, nobody can update it. It's a, an abandoned project that was very, very useful. Uh, and now nobody can work with it. Um, so that's um, that's that's ve very sad. Um, and uh, and I realized that I'm making the same mistakes with Hypergood Hypergood Business. I'm the only one that knows where the domains are. I'm the only one who pays the hosting. If if I was, you know, if I had appendicitis and would have been in the hospital, uh, everything would just stop. Yeah. And it's not just my content up here. More than 140 different people have been writing articles for Hyper Good Business with the expectation that those articles would stay up and be available to people. And um, I don't have a backup plan for any of this stuff. So... I'm feeling a little guilty about that as well, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be working on <coughs> it's on fixing that. <coughs> it's one of the difficulties, isn't it? With a one man show, I mean, you know, I do so much. Um, I like working with other people as much as I can, but you know, I do an awful lot of stuff alone, and then you know, you sort of uh, they go, well, you know, if I suddenly wasn't here tomorrow, that would be half finished, and you know, who uh, how would I be sure that that's going to be maintained? The thing. So I, know, I noticed that article. You said something like. You know, if you're in this seriously, you know, um, find somebody you trust, not necessarily a relative, and put it in your will and do things like this, you know, just think of the future a little bit. Assume right. that this stuff is going to stay around rather than just go. Especially if it's something valuable to the community that the community helped build. Mm. But you kind of have a moral obligation to at least hand it over to the community if you can't p p keep it up anymore. You know, so, um, uh, so, so, so that's kind of my position on that. If it's something that other people have built and they're relying on you to keep it up, um, they're trusting you with their work and their content, you know, you got to give something back. 
Um, yeah. So, um, so that that's like my take on that. So have a contingency plan, have a backup person, uh, prepay your domain name, prepay for your hosting. <clears throat> so, so at least if there's a short term emergency, uh, like so if if I'm gone for a month, maybe. There won't be any new articles, but at least nothing will go down. The resources yeah. will stay available. Okay, so, if we could, yeah, um, yeah that's great. Okay, if, <laughs> if I could dare to try and have you up a bit on the, the headline news so we can get over to Arna because we've got quite a few oh, things right, right, to right. Okay, we've got other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I talked about Casper Tech, Avi Worlds, uh, sorry, not Avi Worlds, Fest Avi. <laughs> it's a fest, yeah. uh, Avatar Festival on Franco Grid. Their application deadline is two weeks from now. If you want to contribute an avatar, you can look at some really funky ones from last year's competition or festival. Mm -hmm. You can teleport over to the avatar region on Franco Grid. They're really cool. Really, some of them are really scientific, science fiction-y and futuristic. So very cool. And the festival itself will be in June. Um, okay, we have a we have a contributed column on some ways that virtual reality helps science education. If that's something you're interested in. And um, I already mentioned the three dollar regions from Sky Life Grid uh, last week. Um, they've also added variable size regions. So, for example, you can get a region that's six by six, so 36 regions total, 150,000 total prims for thirty dollars a month. Oh boy! Can you believe that? You can have a you can you can have an ocean in there. So. I, know, yeah. I was advised um, uh, by uh, the folks at Great Canadian Grid um, uh, uh, against their own interest, in a way, that actually, that um, they, they, they said that you might end up with more problems by investing in the VAR region than, you know, the, the not. You know, you can, you can basically get a VAR region for the same prim count and um, the price of two regions, I think it is. But... Um, I, I think it's something to do with management because obviously there's no border crossings or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it's something to do with the way you actually control um, a, a region of, of that size because it all counts as one region. Um, uh, so, some people report problems. Other people love them and have no problems at all. For three mm -hmm. bucks, you can definitely find out, you know, <laughs> you know, try it out, see if it works for you or not. Um, uh, if it doesn't, it was three months, mm. you know. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. I mean, it races on to get cheaper and cheaper, it seems. Um, hopefully, yeah. folks, um, not only if I'm not lobbed back in, but you've also got my lips waggling at you. I've just got an emergency prompt. They, they went off when I crashed, and, of course, <laughs> I was straight back in in camera mode. I didn't think to switch them on again. So, flap, flap, right. you can now see me talking as well as okay. so, whatever. Yeah, so oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, done. I'm done with my part. Okay. Um, I can talk about uh, the the future cost of land and what's going to happen if you'd like me to, or we can move on to the well, next. Uh, yeah, I think we'll move on to Anna because we, uh, she, um, um, we've literally got a month to catch up on on the arts and destination. <laughs> right, right, right. It's, it's fun, but maybe um, uh, you know we're still doing okay on time. We've still got about um, forty five minutes, so we'll come back to. Um, uh, we'll maybe come back to costings and stuff too. I mean, uh, you know, if they get down to three dollars a region, I mean, how long before they're thirty cents a region? <laughs> they, they, you know, they're already getting dirt cheap. Although I think most operators are realizing, after an initial period, that they can't actually make money when they're that cheap. They really have to put them up in the end. But um, anyway, let me move on. Let me move on, and um, I'm going to switch over to Honor, who's been. Rather quiet, sitting on their own in the corner here. Um, while we've been uh, rabbiting. Oh, and typical. I can't get my... Oh, yes. There we are. I've got my camera to work at last. Welcome, Anna. Welcome back. It's been a while. Thank you. I've been listening. I've been listening. I've been yeah, listening. Yeah, fascinating stuff. You would... Uh, I, 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 actually, I need to impress upon you just how massive um, the hypergrid is becoming in terms of, you know, we used to call your blog and now they're now destination that, you know, um, I know you're going to talk about um, uh, quite a lot of other stuff um, that we need to catch up on today. But, um, you know, uh, Maria here has been post, you know, with destinations, you know, scattered around the hypergrid, you know, it's um, uh, 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 maybe a half a dozen or even eight or nine or ten 
posts a day on her um, Hyperica destinations guide, but they're not all by her. She has other people contributing too, but you suddenly realize just how many destinations are out there now. <laughs> it really does compete with Second Life, but as you say, um, you, you haven't finished with Second Life yet, and nobody could really. I mean, uh, if I actually walked around Second Life trying to explore every square inch, it would take more than my lifetime. <laughs> even, even if I was young, I think it would take more than my lifetime. So, you you know, it, it is, a, it is a, a, a vast area, but certainly I know from safari and things, there's a lot of art, you know, so slightly different destinations and um, arts events going on there. And of course, often the land is so cheap that people who would never be able to find a venue, except for something like LEA and Second Life, can, can actually get venues out there you know, relatively easy. But anyway, um, you were typing in Skype earlier, of course, with um, a whole load of uh, various links to what was going on. So I'm just going to hand over to you. Bearing in mind, uh, it's been a month since we're in Second Life and about two months since we've seen you. There has been a lot and there is a lot currently going on. Um, the only thing I would mention off the top of my head is, of course, that the fantasy fair is still going strong. It won't be going strong for much longer, but there have been endless videos and blog posts coming up about that um, over the past week. And um, it is, um, I, I think the sim is called Fairlands, is it called? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so if you want to, um, uh, that's, um, I haven't been to this yet. I've just been too busy building elsewhere. But um, that, that of all the uh, Relay for Life events, that one is usually, in my opinion, you know, um, the most spectacular. It's all about fantasy and very exotic builds and things like that. Um, you know, there's plenty of fashion things and home and garden and stuff like that. But fantasy fair is something else. <laughs> So I'd encourage people who are in here in Second Life particularly, or maybe people who are elsewhere and want to come back into Second Life to um, check that out if it isn't too laggy. But anyway, over to you, uh, over to you Anna. I'll let you sort of plow through everything in your own order. Okay. I am I obviously can't cover everything I've seen <laughs> in two months. I but bet. I'm going to cover a couple of things that I think you really need to see. One of them, of course, are the builds at Fairland or at Fantasy Fair. Um, if it's intimidating to have 12 sims that are just extraordinary. There's a hunt. There's an amazing hunt, and you'll find the start of it in Fairlands. Um, use that. Follow the, It's a story-based hunt. There's over 100 premium gifts, and you'll have a wonderful time. But let's start back with art. There's some things I think you absolutely have to see. Um, the first, if you haven't seen it yet, is on Leia 20. Just type into your map LEA20. One of my favorite artists in Second Life is a man named Habit Neox. He's one of the nicest people you will ever meet. And Hav is one of the people who made me understand what could be done with immersive art. And one of the reasons I fell in love over and over again in Second Life with what's here. What Hav has built on Leia 20 is called City Inside Out. And let me mm. give you the background to this. To someone without a home living on the streets, the bustling city becomes one united exterior. City Inside Out explores a world that lacks interiors. Some pedestrians throw coins into the beggars' hats, others bark insults to their faces. Joggers, dog walkers, groups of boisterous friends, clean people in new clothes, romantic couples, cell phone conversations, shiny traffic, wash their daily tides of health and prosperity past the homeless. It's a three-level build. You climb up, and it's impossible for me to adequately describe the experience that you're going to have, but you have to have it. It is absolutely stunning. So if you do nothing else this year in terms of art or immersive art or exploring, get out of your skybox, go to Leia 20, and experience City Inside Out, and you won't regret it. It's, it's a truly remarkable uh, creation by Habit Neox. Do we know how long that's on for? Or have we got end dates? Yes, on it's these? one of the it's one of the main Leia artist in resident Grand Sim, so oh, he'll great. be there till the end of June. Oh right, so plenty of time. Well, yeah. not endless but you, time, but plenty no, of time. If you, you really, go. you really, really want to go there. Yeah. The second one, I was exploring with uh, some other bloggers and a few artists that I know. One of the artists was Maya Paris, and which, who you may have experienced, mm. and. It's a build by Rami Nair, who did the first installation 
where I actually got to experience immersive art, and that was Paper Makis a number of years ago. I just blew my mind. I mean, imagine the gif of the head exploding. That was me when I experienced Paper Makis. <laughs> and she's built something now called Sparkies. And after an hour of us all playing with this thing and exploring it and everything else, Maya Paris just said, this is genius. And it is. is it, this, this is, is the one with the puppets, isn't it? No, oh, this no? is, oh, it's a grayscale, it's a grayscale city oh, built on stilts. And a young boy discovers a, uh, well, I don't think he's an alien. He's a type of animal called a sparky. And the sparky knows about color because none of the people in this town know anything about color. And so he introduces color to the town. Um, but in order to have the color appear, you'll see here and there somebody with a paintbrush starting to add color to their grayscale city. But you can go and get um, a HUD with some colors and you can you don't actually change the textures, but you can paint over things. Mm. And a couple of my friends painted me while I was standing there camming around doing things. It's the most extraordinary experience. You have to go visit Sparky's by Rami Nair, who is just one of the best artists on in Second Life. And it's on her sim. She and Ux Hacks are the uh, the curators, um, but right now it's her installation. It's called Metalis. M E T A L E S is the name of the sim. And Just the, type uh, that. The L E S is spelled in capitals, isn't it? So that's, yes, so, uh, but yeah. the, luckily the map doesn't care. The oh. map isn't um, <laughs> very good. <laughs> the map isn't doesn't care if you capitalize things, but. So just try type M E T A L E S into the map and teleport over and go see Sparky's because it's it'll make you smile. It's just it's one of those things that makes the virtual world this is why we exist, you know, mm. is for things like Sparky's. Another uh destination I first posted about a number of months ago. One of those tiny little nugget builds you know it's not even a full sim one of those tiny little things that people probably never know about and you trip over them and you go my god everybody should see these things and it was called the outer garden um or to be more specific the, yeah the outer garden well the outer garden is now sort of an umbrella title and the initial build is now called the white garden um and hidden within the white garden Bizu Dexler, who is, who is the, the designer of these builds, has hidden a teleporter to something called La Campanella, which is another build further up in the sky. And La Campanella is completely different. It's, it's uh, surreal. There's a lovely little train on a tra train track that floats through the air towards the moon. And it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's just stunning. And if you go to the train station in La Campanella, you'll find a teleporter up to yet another build further up in the sky. Um, and I was telling Tara earlier that when I was exploring this build, which you will find in the air above a sim called Calm Beach. You go to Calm Beach and you go to the 3,000 meter level. You'll get to the outer garden. Um, and I was, you know, flying my camera around as I do. I look like such a dork. I just stand there. What you don't know is my camera is flying all over the sim. I know that feeling. It's me. Um, <laughs> and I saw, I saw this little rabbit. Oh. And I thought, oh, well, that's cute. I'll take a picture of a cute little rabbit, you know. I don't usually use it for anything, but for myself, I'll take a picture of a cute little rabbit. And as I was getting the angle of my camera, you know, where I wanted it, the rabbit stood up and he climbed down a ladder and then he crossed this open area and he sat down on a stool at an outdoor coffee thing and proceeded to drink a cup of coffee. And it's not an avatar. It's a piccoli. It's a piccoli by Dazai Voom. These things are amazing. So if you're already familiar with D-Lab or Picolis, then you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, then what you need to do is go to a website called daze-lab, D-A-Z-A-I-lab dot blogspot dot com, and you'll see some videos of the Picolis. 
which is just mind blowing. It's just so cute. I, you know, I know that when I'm looking at my avatar, mm. that this mm. is this is a virtual construct. I know that it's, you know, script and textures and pixels and all of those things. But somehow to me, because I know that I manipulate it, it's moving because I'm moving it. That's different than seeing these objects suddenly become sentient and independent and wander around and do things. So how do, how do, do you know how they work? Are they, are, are they like pathfinding or script, uh, and scripted on to, you know, perform a sequence and then repeat? I think or? These, uh, they, if I can, if I, you explain Yeah, it. I was just going to jump in. Mal, these are, what she's referring to are the same, the same figures um, that I had on the show a month ago. You know the little the little tree house, oh, and they would and 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 they would right. go up the tree house. They would climb up the rope and they would talk to whoever was in the tree house. And then they would get on the bird and they would fly back down to the ground. Right. And they okay. would move around. And there was a bench and there was a couple other things. Um, and and that was just a you know a couple two or three of them that I raised with with a tree house. Um, but I you know I had I I don't know what the what the backhand scripting on that is, but I'm certain that. Uh, he's using a, he's using a, uh, a database that's off mm. you know that's not in Second Life. It's not strictly scripting. It's referring it's to magic. Just, yeah, it's they're they're just uh, and I had the one set up from the from the Christmas collection that I set up um, in kind of in the middle of Chilbo mm. that you took forever to res. <laughs> you know, the yeah, Christmas tree yeah, and the little I, village and the skaters and the, I, I, and I, and I spent all kinds of time just. Standing there watching because, <laughs> because as, as, you know, as Honor says, you get they, they're set up so that each little figure you get the little figure and it comes with something that they will interact with. But the yeah. thing is, that whatever the something is, any of those little figures will interact with it. So you right. get this collection of various objects and the figures, and then they're all interacting. They're interacting with each other. It, they're interacting with these objects, and it's you know who knows what they're going to go do next. It's magic. <laughs> it's, um, it sounds it, it, it sounds like a very complex extension of the kitty cats thing with the <laughs> and the endless mm -hmm. luggage. But um, no, I, mm -hmm. uh, the way uh, 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 the way you were first describing it, uh, on the, I was thinking of like we we have an open sim um, NPCs, non-player characters. Yeah, which no, which this don't is not, get it, but it's no, different. That's yeah. not what this is. This is the, and it's not all. It's not like the Mossums where they're all sort of one being, you know, with different characters. Mm. These are all different creatures and different environments, and and they're not breedables. Oh. Thank God. This is not <laughs> yes. <laughs> but anyway, these are. It's magic. It's absolutely pure unadulterated magic and and if you get a chance you really need to go see them just just to see what can be done and what people are doing now um the next thing i'm going to show you assuming i haven't lost my place here i went to there's two more um sims i want to talk about and then something weekly. in real life weekly. yes weekly is is the one i just lost hold on a second um but first, I'll talk about Miyagi. Um, I went to see a sim today called Miyagi. Now, if you're like me, you're into landscape and beautiful, you know, lush uh, trees and mm. beautiful buildings and wandering around. And Miyagi is stunning. Miyagi is one of those beautiful, calm. I, I don't understand how he's managed to do or she has managed to do a landscape design that is so full and so complete without being laggy or feeling cluttered. But you can do a mountain trail and you can do all of these other things. It's obviously Japanese themed and it's just beautiful. It is also a sim which has a raceway, a sim ball arena, balloon rides, paragliding, bungee jumping. Um, there's a dance hall. And a button, there's a few other things. All, so all it, in one sim. It's all on landscape. the same sim. Oh, it's all on oh. the same sim, and it none of that impacts the gorgeous landscape. I mean, I spent an hour wandering around through trees and lovely paths and beautiful mm. old Japanese buildings and Japanese shrines up in the mountains and everything yeah, else, totally ignoring. Thing. The paragliding, bungee jumping, <laughs> raceway, because they don't impinge on you. Yeah. So 
if you've got somebody who's into extreme sports and is feeling, you know, sluggish because it's been a long winter and they want to go do all this stuff, let them. You can go wander around this gorgeous sim called Miyagi, M-I-Y-A-G-I, and both of you can be very happy. It's, it's, it's the most amazing sim design because not only is it gorgeous, but it's full of stuff and it doesn't feel like it's full of stuff. Yeah. So, that, that's even more remarkable the fact that it isn't it really like, is you know, it, yeah. I mean the bungee jumping and paragliding are on top of this mountain peak hanging out over this deep lagoon and it's terrifying if you're like me and you hate heights you actually, it sounds like but something I'm building at the moment but, then but it's beautifully <laughs> you know molded into the rest of the landscape so mm. that it it's not it's not shrieking out at you it's not just jarring or it's, it's, it's still beautiful the last sim I wanted to talk about today is a brand new art space called Weekly. Um, and when you land, you land 5,000 meters in the air or 2,000 meters in the air. But it's a brand new art space. The installations won't be there for very long. The very first installation is there now, and he is big get because his first artist is Yuma Mayo. Um, and Yuma's installation is called Yes Giovanni. And it's, oh, it's gorgeous. It's got his, his sort of trademark giant mechanical creatures and flowers, but it's also got a beautiful sea level build. Um, and I, I think you want to go there and you want to bookmark it because that there's going to be some really interesting installations there uh, in the future. So you want to go to weekly and we need to encourage more art spaces as well. Mm-hmm. The last thing I was going to talk about today um, is real life. Now, last year was the first annual Silicon Valley Virtual Reality Conference and Expo. And it was live streamed into Second Life at the Leia Theater and it was live streamed online. Um, And one of the things many of us, not just me, I'm not the only one with this issue, uh, took away because out of all the panels and all the speakers for two days of this conference, there was one woman. Yes, I knew that was coming, and it's too true. You it remember? So very one true. Yeah. Woman. There was one woman out of all of those panels, all of those speakers. There was mm-hmm. one woman. And what was really interesting was on the second day, there was a panel on which we had Philip Rosedale and Debbie Alper. And this one woman came and stood up at the microphone and asked the question Where are all the women? In virtual reality. Like, where are they in all these companies? And, you know, (laughs) where are all the, you know. And both Ebby and Philip deliberately, I think. Well, I'll be generous. Both Ebby and Philip misunderstood the question. And both of them talked about how successful women are in world. Which was not the question. Mm. The question (laughs) was, where are the women leading the companies or doing the database design or doing the designs, you know? Or even attending panels. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) No? So anyway, the second Silicon Valley Virtual Reality Conference and Expo is this May 18th and 19th. So I went to look at, they don't have a complete list of all the speakers or the panels or or who's on the panels, but the speakers they have listed Ta-da! There are three women. Oh, so we've really already funny. not, and not only that, it's not just a woman sitting on a panel. These are three stand-up, you know, prominent speakers. One is Excellent. the godmother of VR, Nani de la Pena, oh, yeah. from Emblematic Group. The second is Jody Medich, who's a UX designer. Okay, and the third, who is really exciting is the lead VR innovator at NASA. And she's a woman named Evelyn Morales. So we've already mm. tripled the print. This is a year, you know, a year during which we've dealt with Gamergate and lawsuits and all the rest of this nonsense. Um, but somebody must have been listening because at the very least, there's three women this year at the Silicon Valley Expo. The, the, the other thing, uh, just an uh, anecdote to that actually, is that um, there is, um, I forget what the full title is, but it's uh, a new um, uh, RL again, um, augmented re- reality 
uh, event coming up. And an old friend of ours, she used to be called Tara 5 in Second mm-hmm. Life here. Uh, her name is Tashut. She had a wonderful blog called Yuga Trade. Um, this is all actually organized by her and um, uh, her company. Um, and, you know, this actually strike. you know, the, the augmented reality side of it is something she's moved into, although she's still into virtual worlds too. But... <clears throat> You know, it, it's nice to see it, the woman, you know, a woman also being the, um, how should I say, person in charge of actually booking all the well, people exactly. to well, be on the panels. So it's, it's the old, you know, if yeah. you can't beat them, go out and do it yourself. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, anyway. good news. Good news. We need the, we need a lot more equal balancing in some, of the, in some of these. Uh, unlike this show, where it's actually very difficult for me to find any other male guests. I guess I put them off, so I'm surrounded by females. And that's the way it should be, <laughs> he says flippantly. They, yeah, they now, don't want to compete with you, Mel. Ah. <laughs> You're so manly. Well, uh, <laughs> very good, very good, I suppose. I never thought of myself that way, but never mind. Right. Uh, well, I, uh, well, we're yeah, in yeah, a manner of speaking. It's the I'm leather sure. pants I'm... and the silk shirt. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So that's my update. So, Mal, did we lose you again? I think Mal must have sat on his button and turned turned off his audio. Could we? Let's talk about him some more behind his back then. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that belt buckle. Yes, you are quite right, Tom. Uh, um, I, 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 I either sat on the button or something, and I've been talking away and just sort of actually not busting in, but casually interrupting and stuff like that. So, yeah, at some, at some point, the little light on the button came on, and I don't know why, but there we go. I, I'm hopefully speaking again now. Yes, um, I was just going to say on the Silicon um, Valley uh, virtuality front, there was uh, another video that uh, sometime last week I posted, which is... Um, I think it's about three hours long of their last meetup because they have they have monthly meetups now as well as the annual expo, and um, yeah, the meetups are great too. You know, they, if you're heavily into the new VR hardware, or more importantly, what it can do, um, you know, they they tend to have all the developers who are really competitors, I suppose, in some ways, meeting together, and they put on demos for each other. So you know, you can quite you can quite often see these demos um, on the um, on the uh, film catcher of the event. So, and in so, case I didn't mention it, um, Philip and Ebby are both back this year. As they speakers. are. Um, are, are they going to be hosted by Dragster again? <laughs> well, they're doing stand. They're these. They don't show yet <laughs> panels. They do ah. show as um, individual speakers. And of course, um, Philip is going to talk about high fidelity, which I yeah. assume everybody has gone to visit. Yeah. Um, and he's going to talk about how open source is important. Yeah. Very good. Uh, yeah, I found that that I I actually found oddly enough that last year's panels. Um, that one I found not to be one of the best, really. Um, uh, particularly as they had that fellow who, who literally invent, invented VR, uh, VRML there announcing his new things. And it seems that Draxler, comparing that, it just kept swinging back to Philip and Abby. And, you know, <laughs> the other guys got words in, but, you know, they were, it just didn't feel like a, a discussion of all of them. It sounded like they were all fitting around Draxter Abbey and um, Philip. But, but hopefully it'll work out better this year. Always good to hear those guys anyway. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, those uh, wonderful, wonderful builds there to um, yeah, look, uh, look out for on the art front. Any other, any other actual sort of... Um, um, uh, the, the one with the French name sounds intriguing as a, an actual destination as opposed to an art build. Any other... Um, Actual so just destination sims that you often cover that um, you can remember off Oh, sure. Um, highlights. <laughs> yes, highlights. Well, uh, you want to go to France Port Nawak, which is on Dreamworld Volcano. Just type Dreamworld Volcano into uh, your map. Mm. You'll enjoy that sim. Um, oh, dear. You know, the problem... 
with being old is you don't remember everything that you oh, post. Oh, I know that feeling. Just too <laughs> many of them, too. <laughs> um, yes. So <clears throat> what you have to do is follow the destination blogs, guys. Okay? Yeah. Go see where Yana is going. Go Look at my blog roll. Uh, go see where Zeke Questy is going, where Inara is going, where I'm going. Um, it, 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 they're lover dag. There's yeah. a lot of good destination blogs, and and people work very hard to find some interesting places and share them because that's what we want. Is we want people to see this stuff, so that the people who are creating either art or landscape or whatever they're doing, that people appreciate it. Come and see it because mm. that's what you want. I must admit, I read, you know, I, I obviously um, repost or tweet, rather, your, uh, <clears throat> you and our Ziki Questi, Love Dag, as you said, um, and quite a few others. And actually, it's, it's actually great. There are actually more destination blogs now. I keep, I keep pressing on things I think are destination blogs, and they turn out to be adverts for the costume somebody's wearing. It's a fashion blog, you know, where they visited a location to pose. But um, no, the, 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 uh, I, I, you know, I, there's a limit, as you said earlier, you know, Second Life's too big. It would be there for a lifetime um, in many ways. But um, I, I, I often really enjoy looking at those blogs, even if they are uh, the pictures and things, even if it's somewhere I may never get to because they still capture the essence of it as do of course many videos where people just land and film, film, a, film a region and then put a bit of music on it and that's that you know and if they do a good job of filming that's you know equally rewarding but there is nothing like actually going in there and being there and experiencing the full emotion so to speak that's true. And one of the useful things, I, I mean, it's always been true. We, people talk about bloggers. They assume people are referring to fashion. Some of us aren't. Hello. Um, one of the people on my blog role is Yana, Y-A-N-A. -A. Oh, yeah. Uh, and she's extremely oh. valuable because she knows the Japanese sims. Mm. Sims that are created by Japanese <clears throat> residents. And unless you're part of that circle or that culture, it's very hard to find them. Mm. So... It, what I recommend strongly to people is not only find, you know, a destination blogger that you like, but check out their blog role. Check out Yana's blog role. Check out Furl Fans' blog role or Lover Dags um, because you will find a lot of things that otherwise, I mean, we can't cover everything. We try. Mm. And half the time it seems we're covering the same thing, but that's because we fall in love with them. Um, but it, it, if to help you explore and go see what's going on in Second Life, then do check out the blogs. Mm. No, I think so. Absolutely, it's the same. Uh, it's the same with uh, the hypergrid too. There's, um, you know, I I get the feeds coming in, and uh, there's some things I don't really post because they'll be in German or Italian or something. But you know, um, occasionally I'll post one. But you know, I'm always looking out for the pictures too, because you know sometimes I'll see remarkable looking <laughs> installations, and you know I read the text. I haven't a clue what they're talking about. <clears throat> but uh, but just seeing the pictures is enough to sort of um, you know get me curious and maybe uh, TP over there if I can. So, right on the bloggers, we want more of you, and not just fashionistas. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me, um, let's, uh, we, I, um, I haven't got the screen up. I think we've got about a quarter of an hour left. Um, let me um, pull us into a bit of open discussion if we can. I've got, exactly got a, um, an agenda here. But Maria, when, uh, when you were talking earlier, you said you could come back. I said we come back to discuss something. I forgot what it is now. What's that something to do with destinations? Free, free land. Oh, free land. Yeah, okay. Yes. So, um uh, so this was a debate on hypergrid business over the past couple of weeks. Our our land prices do they have to fall or not? And uh, my theory is that uh, uh duh, obviously uh, because servers are getting so much cheaper. Uh, we had the same thing on the web. Our websites used to cost a lot of money. Uh, you could run one at home on your home computer. Uh, or um, if you had a server somewhere at school or something like that, you might be able to set one up. But for the most part, it was inex inaccessible to the average person. Then GeoCities came out with their free ad-supported web pages for everybody. And, uh, and everybody could have their own web page. 
And then Blogger came out, and now instead of having a single free web page, you can have a whole free website. Um, and I think the same thing is happening in OpenSim. Mm. You already have a large number of grids that offer free residential parcels and free stores to merchants. I mean, this is becoming routine. If you want an, an acre or a small plot of land, uh, they're free you know, in a, so, so many places uh, mm. because grids want to get residents. And they assume that some of those people are going to trade up to full regions or bigger plots of land, and they'll be able to convert them into paying customers. And if they don't like the grid, they'll leave and they'll give their plot to somebody else. So mm. it's not it, – it it's, it's a good deal for the grid. Um, people are going to stick – I also yeah. think um, – <clears throat> I've been discussing this with uh, Roddy and actually Winter Silversmith, who, um, mm -hmm. uh, of course, you, you mentioned earlier. Right, right. Um, you know, uh, Winter, for example, has um, a lot of, um, you know, on his region's uh, residential spots, but they're rented for nothing. He doesn't charge you to rent a house because right. the economy isn't there. Um, mm -hmm. I think what, the, uh, to me, and Honor may be interested in this too, in a sense, is that. It seems to me something we're seeing on the hypergrid and then open sim is that because the prices, I mean, they go from rock cheap um, to pretty darn cheap to not really that cheap, but, you know, um, maybe close, close worlds competing with Second Life, for example. But people are able to come uh, from uh, renting, um, you know, a parcel in Second Life, and for less than what they're paying in Second Life, they can rent a whole region, a whole sim. Mm -hmm. And people who own lots of sims in Second Life can come and start their own grid and connect yep. it to the hypergrid. So mm -hmm. the whole procedure seems to have moved up a level. It's almost as if um, uh, what I was saying, actually, was to um, Roddy, not Winter himself, was that, you know, I don't think Open Sim has a market for... The, you know, the little real estate, renting houses and stuff, uh, you know, oh. give, giving them away or for next to nothing to people on your crew who are helping you. That's one thing. That's one thing I'm doing now. But it's, um, you know, the it's just so easy to get a whole region. You know, why, why have a little parcel on somebody well, else's estate when you can get a whole one? But I was actually saying from an economic point of view, um, a lot of these people who are now taking whole region sims, aren't actually, you know, they're more used to having parcels and they're not particularly adept at actually the management of these things. And so I actually think there's probably a market there for like estate management services where somebody might actually buy, uh, rent a whole region for X price, which seems dirt cheap, but they will then pay another reasonably dirt cheap price for estate management. So in fact, to get the full package, they might end up employing different kinds of services over and beyond the land. Probably not. When I, when I first started touring the hypergrid, I noticed a lot of people who were setting up regions for the first time, and the regions were mostly empty or all under construction. They didn't know what to do with them. You know, they didn't know how to lay out a region. But uh, this is one of those, like, you know, rich people problems. Oh, no, I have so much land, I don't know what to do with it. Yeah. People, fig people figure it out really quickly. It <laughs> fills up so fast. It's amazing <laughs> how quickly you run out of land, no matter how much <laughs> land you have. Actually, this is it, true. Everything yeah. just everything just spreads out. Um, so that that's not so much of a problem. Uh, I do think there. It's not that there's zero market for small lots. I mean, AOLs is still selling email accounts to old people. Um, Hey, yes, I resent that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maria, I think you just put your foot in it there. They <laughs> no, no, they admit it. They, 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 only, like... they sell email accounts to people who remember AOL. Maybe no, that's no. a more polite way of putting it. <laughs> no, AOL admits that they're like a certain percentage of our customers have broadband. Mm -hmm. They're paying for our service even though they don't need it because they're in the habit of doing it or they can't figure out how to cancel the service. Yeah, I know. I, AOL, I, I, AOL knows this. <laughs> I have a friend who's exactly that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't uh, and, about AOL. And that's how she I mean, they're used to it. So they just, you know, just do it their old way. There's a hosting company, a web hosting company in my town, you know, a couple towns over, that sells people hand-coded HTML pages, charges them through the nose for it, 
And anytime they want to change a comma or add a couple of words, they charge them for the edits. Mm -hmm. And they claim they're doing them a service. And I feel like slapping that guy every single time I see him. Because these are like really ugly 20-year-old out-of-date websites yeah. that he charges Dancing thousands baloney. of dollars <laughs> for. Uh, there'll always be people that can pull that yeah. on, basically. So, <laughs> yeah. there's always, so there's always going to be some market for that. Um, mm. Even though you could, they, those people could set up the same thing on Blogger for free with just a $10 domain and have a million times more functionality and social media integration. Uh, they have to put out the effort to learn to do that. And mm. for some people, it's worth a couple of thousand bucks not to have to think about it. Mm -hmm. or, or they're really I, I still think he's taking advantage of them, but he is. Hey, yeah. Now so so there's gonna be those kind of people in open sim as well. Mm -hmm. Their customers are coming straight from Second Life. They think three hundred dollars is a reasonable price to pay for land. And when they get it offered to them for seventy five or sixty, they're thinking, Oh my god, what a deal. And they're happy with it, and they're happy to pay whatever the proportion price is for a parcel or a quarter, or, you know, whatever acre that they're going to get, that they're going to get. And some of them are going to stick with that. Others are going to Google open SIM hosting and come to my page, which lists all the prices of everybody and go, huh, gee, you know, um, I am like getting really ripped off here, <laughs> but, but until mm. they do that Google search, they might never know. Indeed. Um, or they might do the Google search, then come back to the hosting provider and say, why are you charging me 10 times more than the other guy? And the hosting provider will say, oh, you see, we have backups and stability and then make up various excuses for it to make the customer feel better. Okay. But I think, but over time, over time, I do think we're, we already have free, free parcels, free residential parcels and free stores. We're getting close to free regions. Um, and as soon as we get any venture capital money into OpenSim at all, now so far everybody's been ignoring OpenSim um, and focusing on the hardware and the video game development. Uh, we are totally off the radar of Silicon Valley for the most part. I mean, the Oculus Rift folks know that we exist, but that's pretty much that's about it. But as soon as we get onto people's radar that things are happening here, and money starts flowing in, we're going to start seeing people offering free regions as a marketing tool to attract people to their companies until they burn through their venture capital money. Mm. And since prices are continue dropping, at a certain point, the price of a region is going to be lower than the acquisition cost of a new customer. Yeah. So it'll be easier to give people regions than to buy ads. Um, and a certain number of customers are going to upgrade to more land or premium regions or whatever, and it's going to make that economical. So um, that's going but, to happen. But just, just okay. Now, uh, look, Anna, Anna, you know, yes. I spend you know my time in Second Life, and one of the reasons I spend my time in Second Life is because of what's here, and part mm -hmm. of that is is community, etc., etc., etc. And I understand you know, hypergrids out there and I understand it's a less expensive way to go. And I understand it's like, you know, pioneer days and people land rushing in Oklahoma and, and all of that stuff. And it's exciting and there's people and there's, there's stuff going out there. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> if I'm a venture capitalist and somebody is saying to me, this is a great place for you to invest. And I look at something where the price is falling continually mm -hmm. not going up so the price and the value is going down mm -hmm. and I say to myself where's my return what would I be getting and how if I invested money in something which is aiming to free where mm -hmm. am I going to get a return why I on think, earth um, would I invest in something well, this why is why I my think, money? I think this you, is this I is why you, I mentioned GeoCities. GeoCities yeah, is the exact exact answer to that. They got a lot of investment capital to to give out free web pages. They had a kind of a I, I wishy washy hoping someday money will come strategy with advertising support and premium sales. But basically, they were losing money, burning through venture capital. 
they made the money back. They sold out to, I believe, uh, Yahoo. Mm, yes, it was. Um, but what they did was they got millions of people onto the web. <laughs> they were they were doing they were being valuated by eyeballs during the dot com boom, not by profits or revenues, but by that's, eyeballs. <clears throat> I mean, gonna, that's, yeah, hang on, hang on a sec, because we are uh, closing in on time, and there's just one other thing I want to bring up too. Um, I think you both have a point on this, though. Um, you you've only got to look at the way something as huge as Facebook started by giving away pages. Mm-hmm to students and then to young people and then they all left and there's now they give they give away pages to old people providing mm-hmm. you stay logged into the site or you can't get to them anymore apparently as of yesterday may the first but um you know um i i i, I think you know honest criticism about prices going down is sort of valid, but probably misses the point that technology is increasing all the while, and it is obvious that server space will go down. There's just more servers online, bigger, faster ones, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it, it's an economies of scale thing. It doesn't mean there's not an economy there. Now, what um, a few, a, a few, you know, um, the prices we pay for regions in some open sim grids now would have been unthinkable even on open sim. You know, mm-hmm. just a couple of years ago, but they do now make economic sense. So, you know, I, I w- it wouldn't surprise me if you might find venture capitalists coming in when the platform is more known oh, on do, the on the basis of projects, for example, within the I environment. do I do agree with her about why open sim. So, mm-hmm. I mean, the reason why you want you don't want to put venture capital into Second Life is it's not scalable. Um, it's a private company. Yeah, that, that's a private company, but in the platform is not scalable. Open Sim mm. is infinitely scalable. Yeah. You can have your grids grow as big as you want. You can have uh, everything grow as big as you want. Um, the 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 main opposition to that is right now Open Sim is the only platform that you can say that for. But two, three, four, five years from now, when we have the VC boom. It might no longer be true. We might have high fidelity. We might have yeah. other open source platforms that are c- couldn't grow and be that as scalable. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's going to be open sim, open sim that gets the influx of capital yeah. and everything else. But it's going to be something like open sim. It's going to be open sourced. It's going to be scalable. It's going to be um, uh, something that people can set up at a low cost and then expand dramatically. Mm. And, and it, it will happen. Um, uh, as, as, um, as Jessica was uh, from Firestorm was saying on the show the other week, I mean, mm-hmm. she, she, <clears throat> you know, she sees Second Life in decline and uh, it's a long, slow process. But, I mean, there'll be a new version of Second Life that may hijack some existing users mm-hmm. and others moving to open sim. But there are, you know, the high fidelity is the, oh, um, uh, 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 I've forgotten the name again, um, uh, the other possible options coming up. But I think, you know, um, all this focus on VR technology, right, and the mm-hmm. hardware, I mean, the hardware is still all scattered. There's no one right. product that does it all and no one product is easiest to put in as a pair of contact lenses, for example, mm-hmm. um, that retains all the haptic, tactile things we, we will eventually need for interfacing. Mm-hmm. That has yet to come. Yep. But also, um, too many of these hardware uh, developments are basing their PR and their um, sort of fit-for-use um, examples on prototype softwares and things like that that are being created for those devices. Even even Windows is trying to build Windows 10 to work with that new HoloLens or whatever, which is, right. they, they consider to be your new Windows computer. You just wear it. Who knows what will happen? But, but I, 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 I think that, um, you know, virtual worlds um, in some form have to have a kind of ubiquitous nature. They can't be tied some can maybe, but they can't be tied to pieces of hardware. It's like having an app that you can only get on an iPad versus another app you can only get on Android. You're not distributing. You're not reaching mm-hmm. out to the greater market. It's got to be. It's got to be, you know, compile once, deploy everywhere kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And the same mm-hmm. has to be the case for environments. So you know, it should be one day 
um, it was easy for me to um, teleport from my own grid on uh, my own regions on Great Canada into Second Life, not necessarily with an in inventory or anything like that, just with a you know visitor's visa, so that I can actually <laughs> teleport to a location, see it, see you know, follow a link that Honor's posted, go over there and see it without quitting my viewer, and then teleporting back to my own grid, you know, without an inventory necessarily those are different problems that need to be overcome but you know that i don't think you can afford as you're saying maria to have any of these uh, you know persistent wall gardens that won't go on forever you know mm -hmm. high fidelity will be open an open system high, uh, the meta, uh, hypergrid an open mm -hmm. sim by and large is and um there'll be others and I think the wall garden approach, especially Linda now, so the, their new world is also going to be wall garden, if not more so. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not uh, sure. Just, 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 I, I, I don't think my answer about. I don't think I had an answer about about uh, venture capital, but that's okay. We don't have time. But I will yeah. point out, um, I was involved in a project involving some senior people at IBM reps from Linden Lab, general people who are techies and, and, and interested in this thing, mm. on um, an open metaverse project within Second Life years ago. When oh, years. yes, yes, I was too. Right? Yeah. 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 So it's not, this isn't new. The idea of a walled garden isn't so much that nobody else can come in from the outside. The idea would simply be that each of these metaverses, and I think, I assume, even some of the grids in open sim have rules and so what you don't want is people wandering through who don't either know the rules or fit the rules or oh, yeah. agree mm -hmm. to abide by the rules and just wandering in and out right so it was sort of like border mm -hmm. control yeah, um absolutely. that was the oh, big issue yeah, the technology need... issues beside the point the the point of of this is our world, you can't come in. That's not what I don't think anybody would say. It's that they have to be able to control what happens when somebody comes in or how they leave or, or all of that. So they can't come well, in and I'm, rip off everybody's inventory. Yeah, they no, no, those, those, that. those that we've been talking about those recently, those are serious right. issues, right? Um, I, am, I am thinking of things like possible, you know, I equate this with the real world. You know, um, I often say, you know, I, I, I'm in famous feelings about um, buying a, a wig mm -hmm. that um, is no copy, uh, no transfer, because I can't get I can't put it in my suitcase folder. It just stays in my local world inventory. And I don't you know, um, I don't want to lose it when I have a grid to another grid. And, you know, I don't expect to get on an airplane to America and suddenly find myself without any clothes on. Or wait, when <laughs> I get there. Now, if I buy a house, no, if no I but buy you would expect to have your car. Yeah, right. If, yeah, you would and, not expect to leave England, arrive in the United States, and your car is no, parked outside the airport. Certainly, I certainly wouldn't be able to pack my house in a suitcase. No. So, I think <laughs> there are certain metaphors we can use. Well, they're not really metaphors; they're just facts. You know, certain things are, by their very nature, should be transportable and ubiquitous, but other things are very much, you know, why would I buy a house to put in my suitcase? I wouldn't. I would buy a house to have to deliver to a particular grid. And open sim is very much more flexible these days. There are grids around that actually have very strict rules. They let people hypergrid in to visit, but they don't let people easily um, get anything or buy anything in those grids. They say, you know, the uh, hypergrid visitors have a visitor's visa. Other grids are fully open, so somebody hypergrid uh, uh, gridding in is, you know, um, <laughs> the law of the land is the same as the grid they left, probably, you know. But the the thing is, there are, um, you know, there are uh, permissions in place where you can be partially hypergrid enabled, where you can have visitors in, or your residents can go out. It's not, it's not totally an open book. So, the border controls and things like that, and permissions on ownership of things, are are being are are being um, sort of tackled. But oh, no, I, can I get a, can I get a word in here? Before we get oh. completely away from the subject of, uh, <laughs> of of the of the race to the bottom as far as uh, the price tag on regions, and that is, I think there's two things you got you got to remember. Yes, the tech, the hardware itself may come down in price. Tarvik, your there, voice is very low. If you could just speak up a bit. Um, okay. Well, I'm probably not speaking at the in the right direction here. 
uh, <laughs> as far as where my microphone is located. Okay, in in the race to the bottom for the price of of regions, um, <clears throat> the the issue is not just the hardware costs. You've got all kinds of other expenses there, and if it, there is a point at which you 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 have to draw a line. The hard hardware may get cheaper, but the human resources involved in maintaining the hardware and replacing the hardware don't get cheaper. No, no. <clears throat> and the, but they, and, but and the second get piece, automated. the second piece, hold it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the second piece of this that I, that I that I think is being forgotten when you talk about <clears throat> venture capital is <clears throat> this this old line that was was the um, what sunk the the dot com what uh, what created the dot bomb disaster in 2001, 2002. And that was, what is your business plan? How are you going to make money? Exactly. And unless a company can answer that question, unless a company can answer that question convincingly, venture capital mm. has no interest in you. Mm. That's the reality. There, there has to be a business plan. It has to be, it has to appear to be viable. It has to, you know, you, how you have to be able to Where's Say, their this is return? This is why I think that if venture capital moves in, it will probably not be um, platform based. It will be project based. In I other words, if I if I launch an archaeological project, you know, there is some kind of massive project that will pay people to come and see historical recreations and use OpenSim as um, a, a software as a base for building that, then maybe um, venture capitalists will be attracted. I don't know, you know, it's a hypothesis here, that particular project. So well, I'll be saying the project where OpenSim is the platform. I won't be selling OpenSim per se. Okay, and I think, I think that's the big difference. Let's, let's, uh, tackling okay. that, do you remember the Greenies? <laughs> Do you remember the oh company? yes, yes, greenies? I know. Do I know John. Remember John the company? Yes, I know John. The company Resident they then Resident. built to create archaeological sites. Uh, to get key. a lot of venture capital. Yeah. Um, but I suspect what will happen, unless somebody can say it's more than the old, you get exposure, because there's people in OpenSim. Yeah. Venture capitalists will do what they're doing now, which is invest in the hardware, because there's yeah. return there. Until you have a product in OpenSim, something they can say, oh, okay, there's a return. I, I, I will have money coming back to me because of something, not because of sort of maybe there'll be projects. There's no product right now that ap would appeal to a venture capitalist. There's nothing for them to get return on. There's yeah. two things, two things for venture capitalists that they will be looking at. Not, not immediately right now. Like you said, right now they're investing in hardware. But a couple of years in the future, they'll be looking at two things. One is what's going to be the next Google or Facebook? Google or Facebook both started out by attracting eyeballs and then they monetized them. So they're going to be looking at big scalable plays to be the next Google or Yahoo or Facebook or MySpace or whatever it is, a virtual world. The second thing they've been looking at is things with buyout potential, companies that will grow to a certain point and then be bought out by Facebook, mm. by Yahoo, by Microsoft, by Apple whoever. And those companies, those giants are going to go on a spending spree to try to beat the other guys to being the virtual world dominant players. They're going to, they are sitting on extremely large amounts of cash. They do not have virtual world projects in place right now. They will be spending like crazy. Facebook's $2 billion investment in Oculus Rift is just the early, early tip of the iceberg as to what Microsoft and Apple and the other guys are going to start plowing into this sector. What about, uh, Maria, just a quick question, and then I do want to ask something else before we really do have to wrap. Um, but on, on that very point, um, wouldn't um, I'm just thinking of Kindly Marketplace. Mm -hmm. You've got Kindly the Grid, you've got Kindly Marketplace. Now, I'm not very keen on Kindly the Grid. I don't like being logged out every 30 minutes and having to re-log <laughs> in because of their way of bringing the Sims on and offline. But right. Kindly Marketplace, as we all know, is fantastic. It will mm -hmm. deliver, you know, you go today, it's like Second Life Marketplace, you choose an item, and then you, if it's all permissions, you can have it delivered to you on your home grid and you can take it everywhere. But if it's got limited permissions, you can choose which grid delivery happens on. So I can get something delivered to Great Canadian Grid and it stays on Great Canadian Grid. I can't travel with it, 
but I have the option of buying it at Kitely and choosing my country of destination for delivery. Mm. Mm -hmm. And surely, at this early stage as yet, but as this sort of thing grows, surely somebody's going to come along, um, like Lyndon Lambs bought the independent marketplaces. Somebody's going to mm -hmm. come along with money and say, I want to buy that marketplace. You know, this is a marketplace of virtual goods. It services multiple grids, not just one. Mm -hmm. And, hey, I can put some money into that and get it. This is an investment. I think um, that's that's part of that could be one of Kidley's exit plans, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't mean it that way, but good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the point. Okay, um, well, we really do have to wrap, but I did have one question I want to bring up, and hopefully uh, it's really for you, Maria, but it may interest on the two. Um, and I'd like it only if you know the answer. I'd like it concisely, please. <laughs> I was reading, and typically I must have misread this somehow, and it's not as easy as I thought, but... Um, Firefox and I think it pretends some various viewers can, can be f configured now so that the destination guide button props mm -hmm. up a destination guide that is like the Second Life destination guide, but not but it is hypergrid yes. destinations as opposed to local grid destinations. Now I tried this in Canada today and it didn't work. Um, there was, I just got an empty web page for the... because the grid owner has to do it. Right. Okay. So, what is the process there? Very quickly, if you don't go into too much tech, how would we get? How does that get? Um, you, how does that you, work? Get enabled. You talk to the grid owner. You say, "I want this destination guide. We don't have one for the grid. Let's use the Hyperica one." Right. The the grid owner uh, uh, Google's Hyperica destination guide. Yeah. The script commands are in there. You just pull it out. Put it in your robust INI file. Right. And now your grid has a destination guide. That's the Hyperica destination guide. Okay, and I'll, that's enough. I'll, I I will <laughs> tell I will tell Roddy what to do because we don't have a. I actually was think on the wrong track. I, I I was sitting there wondering if I have to go to debug settings and actually type in a URI, um, you know, a web page that that actually is the server for the destination guide. But I was obviously on the wrong track there. So I'll get Roddy to get hold of you and sort that one out. Okay, okay. So it's going to have to be a wrap. Um, before we go, um, I'll do what I usually do in very quick terms. And that is I'm going to go around everybody here. Um, uh, who's with us just to see if there's anything else exciting that's happened in the last past week or coming up in the next couple of weeks that they may be a bit different or hasn't been hitherto discussed. And since she's our guest of honor today, I'll start with honor. Anything uh -huh. exciting that's just happened to you or is about to happen to you? Or you wish, you wish would happen to you. I did get a new computer, finally. Oh, nice. Yeah. I won some money playing online slots. For my, <laughs> because my, uh, our government, uh, I have a government lottery site. and I can play slots there. So I won a new computer. So I'm very pleased. However, I will just reiterate, go see City Inside Out and go see yeah. Sparkies. That's all I'll say. Okay, wonderful. And we will, we will, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, uh, Maria, anything you haven't mentioned so far that is um, you want to round off with? Um, nope. I think I've brought everybody up to date as to what I'm working on. Uh, the the only thing is that um, uh, I'll be I'm going to be trying to be adding uh, events to the Hyperica destination guide. <laughs> so when you open up the guide, you'll see what's happening right now on the yeah. Hypergrid. So if you are a grid with an events calendar, and I don't know about your calendar yet, you really might want to um, email me and get that in there. I'm actually thinking, uh, I don't know as much to put in it, but I'm thinking of starting a Metal World calendar for shows and things. But since it's only this one at the moment, I'm not sure it's much for <laughs> when, when things get going anyway. Okay, uh, ta 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 Tava, closing thoughts, round up. Um, oh, just just uh, two, two quick items. One you have through tomorrow, Sunday, to visit uh, Fantasy Fair in Second Life. Uh, tomorrow is the last day, so you've got today and tomorrow right. to uh, race through the hunt if you're going to do it or catch, you know, look around. And the second item is uh, uh, Mal is not the only one with new Sims. I have some new Sims too uh, in Great Canadian Grid. Um, Tara Bay. Um, I, I forget the names of the other two, but <laughs> one of them is Mount Meru, uh, and a mountain has appeared there, although it's not the permanent mountain, and there's nothing nothing, nothing to be destinationed yet on any of my sims either. So, <laughs> Well, 
I would add that um, no sooner have I got them than I've exploded into them. They're all very different, but I'm because focusing on the borders mostly, so they all join together seamlessly and making sure you don't cross bridges and fall into waters. On the re- I've been relocating rivers with bridges away from region borders <laughs> to make it nice and smooth for you. Anyway, anyway, that's, um, that's something else. Um, <clears throat> okay, well, it, it's uh, been um, a great show, and um, uh, we hope um, uh, to bring you more great shows in future. We will be back here in Second Life, of course, um, next month on whatever the first Saturday of the month is. Uh, hopefully you might better join us again on there because there'll be another month of stuff to catch up there you go that time and we always have plenty to talk about um next week's show we'll be back at our hq on great canada grid um at meta world broadcasting of course and um we'll be joined by a third member who's going to um, have some news for us but we're also going to be joined by possibly the one person in the universe who I have been dying. I never even got her on Crossworlds, but I'm going to I'm dying to have her on this show. And it's a her. Yes, it's a her for that. Right. She's a big player. She invented the hypergrid. And it's none other than uh, Crystal Lopez, Dr. Crystal Lopez. So some of you actually may know from uh, uh, her days in Second Life, uh, her avatar was Diva Canto. And she was even a musician here um, for a while. She played gigs in her spare time. Um, so, um, but um, ever since I saw um, Krista, um, and I remember Tara was there filming with me, you know, that we don't have a record. Uh, Krista actually appeared in Second Life many years ago, and she gave a talk describing how the hypergrid would be built. And it was, it was a, a 3D talk. Because she had to actually create maps on the ground that represented land geometry. And then she had to create layers above those, which made, <clears throat> made up different coordinates. And, you know, she explained how you would have this like flat earth that was infinite, but also you'd have layers on top of this flat area so that, you know, the, you could scale um, the directions of the hypergrid and the regions up, down, or out, if you see what I mean. It was a fascinating. And then, of course, you know, it was all academic theory then. And then along came the hypergrid as we know it. And um, uh, there's no going back. So um, really do join us for next week's show. I think it's going to be uh, something special. And this, of course, I my mouse I'll, I'll probably get <laughs> stage fright <laughs> won't have any questions coming out of my mouth who knows but anyway it will be fun whatever happens so um, we will see you again um, hopefully next week um, thanks to uh, Honor um, uh, our guest this week Honor McMillan thank you Honor and we'll see my you pleasure soon. Thank you for having me. Thank you as always to Maria Koroloff and um, of course the new source Hypergrid Business <laughs> Thanks, Mal. Great to meet you. Meta, Meta Maria. <laughs> I haven't done that one for a while. You can follow um, Maria at uh, twitter.com slash Maria. Uh, <laughs> Meta World Business or Meta World Maria. She's got <laughs> Meta, Meta Maria is probably a good one because you'll get hypergrid business thrown in. And um, thanks also to Tara, of course. Thank you, Tara. You're welcome. <laughs> and um, thanks to Tara a second time for filming here and also uh, thanks to uh, um, an unseen crew member now um, uh, James who's um, also been streaming this um, as, uh, on the test stream and will be um, doing some of the main streams uh, for us um, very shortly so uh, thank you to James um, as well um, and that's it so until next week I wish you all a very good morning or a very good afternoon And if it pleases you, a very good evening. But more importantly, I'm going to wish you a good tomorrow, depending on wherever and whenever you are. And we will return.